welcome to Urban Knife Guy, where we explore the urban knife style and jungle survival. In this video, we're going to have a look at this survival wallet for hiking and bushcraft. In previous videos, I've shared how to build a survival tin and survival pouch. I've taken all the best ideas from those projects and put it into this one. I think the survival wallet is great for someone who's new to hiking, camping or bushcraft. And this is a great introduction to all the various survival items that you can carry as well. And all in this neat wallet package, which you can put into your fanny pack or your backpack. So let's first have a look at the wallet itself. This is a nylon wallet with a Velcro closure and there's a front pouch over here. This is a Japanese design and you should be able to find something similar online quite easily. There are many compartments and slots inside which allows you to organize your items uh, very easily. So what you want really is a wallet, um, I would say fairly lightweight. Right? So you don't want a leather wallet. A nylon wallet is good, fairly weather resistant or water resistant and something I think in bright colors. I chose this uh, black and orange design. I know it's really color coordinated and that's very important for the urban knife style but the high visibility orange is really good because if you're out in the jungle or the forest where everything is green and brown this will stand out if you happen to drop it so look for something really bright and that will stand out in the outdoor environment let's start off with the outside of this particular wallet as you can see there's a lanyard or a paracord lanyard with this strap watch strap style compass. So navigation is very important. You definitely need to have some kind of compass to ensure you know which direction you're going, especially if you get lost. And this paracord is not regular paracord. This is a special type of survival paracord or fire cord. And this particular brand is from PS Cook. And what makes it unique is that unlike normal paracord, which has only seven strands, this has 10 strands. So it's got the seven nylon strands, but it's also got a fire tinder strand a fishing line and a thin cotton line as well for repairs. So this I think is great to have all in one package and having some cordage on the outside uh, with those, all those functions is uh, pretty useful. And this is basically looped and tied to this loop which originally came with kind of like a keychain strap. Uh, now let's go to the outside. If you can find a wallet with a pouch like that, it's good because you can take some of the bulkier items and put it on the outside. And let's open this up. And we have a big lighter. Uh, being able to start a fire is very important. And you know, the easiest way, probably one of the easiest way is to use a lighter. So I would say always carry this, especially if you're new to camping, bushcrafting, you know, while there are other tools like a ferro rod which can be used, you want something that you know you can use. So, you know, a lighter is a good choice. And speaking of ferro rods, I do have a ferro rod over here. And I have actually a magnesium rod with a ferro rod. So this is a magnesium bar and there is a striker. So what you can do is scrape off the magnesium, uh, which will burn very hot and that adds to your tinder pile. And then you can use the same striker to strike the ferro rod over here, which generates sparks. So this is great to carry on in addition to a lighter, uh, because lighter may run out of fuel, uh, but that's why we also get the strike wheel style, so you can still get sparks if you need. Uh, but the ferro rod, of course, will give you hundreds of sparks at this uh, size, uh, and it's a good tool for you to learn and practice as well. Also, I've got a survival whistle. Very important to have a whistle if you happen to be lost, uh, you're trapped uh, down at the bottom of a ravine or a cliff, uh, you're injured, you get tired shouting for a long time and you can only shout so loud for so long. Uh, so whistle is very important. And finally, I have a Sharpie. So this mini Sharpie is to write down messages as you need, uh, but it's also going to be used in conjunction with one more item inside the wallet, which I'll show you in just a bit. So that's what we have on the outside and this outside pouch. And let's open this here. As you can see, there are many slots. And over here, I've got a clear window. And uh, what I recommend is you can get a plastic sleeve like that and list down all your emergency contacts as well as information, such as your name, blood type, 
anything that you think is important and contacts in terms of, uh, let's say, emergency services, forest rangers, etc. And maybe uh, who to contact in terms if there's emergency. So basically, if someone happens to find you or you need help, you can't talk, they can open this wallet and they find all the information uh, that you need. And having it right in front here, uh, so that when they open the wallet, they see it right away, that, that is very useful. Let's start off on the left over here. We've got a safety pin, a uh, very useful item, and we can just put that on the loop. A lot of these wallets have some kind of a label tag like that, so just slot it in. If it doesn't, you can actually kind of just uh, pierce it into the material and uh, just uh, make sure it's, it's, it's stuck to the wallet material itself. On this first slot over here, I've got some duct tape. Uh, this is actually flattened. And what I did was I cut a piece of plastic actually from this sort of material, this kind of ID pass material. And I cut it to shape and then I put the duct tape. This is two inches. Uh, actually, this is gaffer's tape, uh, which uh, I prefer because there's no sticky residue and you can easily remove it. And uh, basically, I just wrapped it around and I get a, you know, several feet of duct tape over here and that fits in very flat so the whole idea is to be flat and to keep it uh, within these slots for your wallet i've got some kevlar thread over here for cordage so that is coiled and really tightly coiled up as you can see in this uh, neat package and if you want to learn how to do this off coils do check out a video that i shared on uh, coiling paracord and you can check out the video in the link in the card above or the description below. Let's see, I didn't use all the slots because that would really make the wallet, you know, way too uh, thick. Uh, but ah, here we have flagging tape or signal tape or surveyor's tape. And this is used in conjunction with the Sharpie. So if you happen to be lost, you can tear pieces of this and tie it around a tree uh, to mark your trail. And if you want to uh, really make sure rescuers uh, might know where you're going, what you can do is you can write your name, uh, write the time that you're here. And if you can give some kind of direction, let's say, because you have the compass and you can give an indication of which direction you're going at the time, uh, this can be very useful. And if you've got any injuries or any situation that you want rescuers to know about, you can write that down as well. Uh, so you get several feet of this tape. I believe I've actually about four meters of uh, the surveyor's tape over here. Uh, so very good for marking trails, especially if you get lost. And again, if you're new to hiking, getting lost is probably one of the things uh, that could happen to you or the most likely things that could happen to you. And I've got some fire making capabilities. Early on, we showed the lighter as well as the ferro rod. But here we've got some matches. These are storm proof matches of a striking surface. I've got some jute, right? So I've got natural jute um, string. So this is very fibrous. You can tease it apart, form a bird's nest, and this will catch a spark or flame very easily. I've also got waxed jute, which is basically this, but soaked in wax. And I've shared how to make this in a previous video. So do check out the link in the card above and the description below as well. And finally, I've got more tinder in the form of cotton soaked in petroleum jelly or Vaseline and sealed up in a straw like that. So this is just a straw stuffed with the cotton and you take a piece, pair of pliers, clip it, use a lighter to heat it up to seal both ends. So this is a small little fire kit that fits into one slot of the wallet as well. Okay, that's all for this side. Let's open on this side. And over here, I've got a signal mirror. And this is something I just put together myself. So what I did was to take the plastic from one of these ID holders once again, and I took a mirror uh, tape. So it's, it's a laminated uh, mirror sticker, I guess, uh, that I stuck over the plastic. And there's actually a plastic film, which I did not remove, but um, peel it off so you just can see. Here you can see, once I remove the film, it's the shiny surface becomes really apparent, but I just keep it covered for, you know, keep it protected. Great thing about this, this won't break. So I've got a big enough signal mirror, but, you know, it's not going to crack or break like glass or acrylic wood. And that goes into that slot over there. Over here, I've got my cutting tool. 
one of the most important things to have in the wild is a cutting tool and uh, this is a great little almost credit card style blade this is the Boca plus subcon 2.0 so very flat as you can see it is a frame lock and you as the thumb, thumb studs so you can open it like that you can see there's a very short blade but very beefy and this is a d2 uh, steel blade i won't get into the you know specifics of the knife here but having a good knife is very important in the outdoors and i think this is one of the best credit card style knives Boca plus has put out you know different credit card size knives over the years uh, but this is the subcon 2.0 so the latest version of this particular knife and i think it's the best of the lot in terms of construction in terms of the ergos and the grip uh, one of the complaints of previous credit card uh, knives it's it's just the ergos were bad and just just didn't feel good you couldn't use it but this actually feels pretty good for the size and what it is and very beefy as well and of course the frame lock ensures this this doesn't you know close up on you if you use it to process wood or to cut whatever you need to cut so that fits into slot as well and uh, for these slots I've got a variety of first aid items I've got these straws uh, and these are two of them and these are filled with antiseptic cream so the previous one uh, that I showed earlier with the fire kit that was with cotton this is just antiseptic cream uh, so that if you need it uh, you can just cut that open and apply that and I've got a bunch of band-aids of various sizes over here let's see what we have these are alcohol swabs so basic first aid and over here i've got some uh, purification tabs so small tabs one tablet for one liter of water so a bit of first aid and water prep now with water preparation what you do need is some kind of container so over here I do have a large Ziploc bag and this is the freezer style so it's uh, thicker and tougher so you can use this to collect water and if you're collecting water from let's say a stream or a natural water source there may be a lot of sediments so what I have over here are some uh, coffee filters so these are filters there are two of them and you can actually reuse them so you can actually collect water through this first uh, to really capture the main big sediments to clean your water and then you could use the puree tabs uh, to purify the water even further so that uh, plastic bag and the filters went to the one money billfold slot here and over here i've got uh, some gauze and bigger bandages again uh, more for you know basic first aid and I believe that it is so that's quite a lot of useful items that pack flat and fit into this wallet now if you really wanted to go further you could include an emergency blanket like this and this is for cover and because of the orange side over here it can be also used as a signal panel but of course this will make your wallet much thicker it can fit I've tried it uh, already but it just makes it uncomfortably thick for me however that's an option if you want but if you're new to hiking, camping and bushcraft and you're thinking of putting together some kind of a survival kit, consider a wallet like this. It's an easy project, you're going to have fun doing it and you will be able to get most of these items fairly easily. Let me know what you think of this survival wallet. Do you think I should have other things? Should I take out some things? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content in general, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.